love your Buddha too. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hey, Me and Come on. Go ahead. Um, How are you doing, boy. everyone? How are you doing? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is going to be a routine on um, Wednesday. It is Wednesday, right, Prophet? I'm yeah. going to tell you, like, I've been time jumping. Seriously. I'll wake up and I think I am in Sunday when it's only like Friday. Mm -hmm. So I've been time warping. So um, this is going to be um, something that we are going to do on Wednesdays. Um, just kind of chatting it up and encouraging and motivating people. Um, so I'm going to let you um, go ahead and do an introduction of um, where you want today's topic to go. Because uh, I know I was talking about some stuff behind the scenes. Um, and it's not going to be too long, guys. We're not going to be on here too long. But definitely, we've been talking about emotional and mental wellness in this season, especially for the next 15 to 18 months um, with this climate. Yeah. And um, I want to uh, address that I um, received a, um, a comment um, where someone said they didn't know I, I was a therapist. I am not a therapist. Um, I found that becoming a therapist would be more restrictive. And so I took um, coaching and um, I, my master's is in human services. And so that means that I can do a lot of things across the board. Therapists can too, off the chart. Um, the, the work that they do is just a little bit different because they we coach people into wellness and, and, and mental health. Mm -hmm. That means that we um, actually present ideas to help them think better, such as like history and mm -hmm. um, why the um, country is in a state that it is in and how it affects you and me. Um, okay. I won't say that therapists don't do that, but their um, modality is to stick to pretty much listening. Um, in some uh, behavior models, they can use different modalities like taking them back into trauma. Um, the coaches don't do the past trauma in an individual such as rape. Okay. Which is, you know, a lot of what is coming up in people through the energies now. And um, it's because it wants to be fixed. It's a shadow. The lack of confidence, as you brought up, um, earlier and I want to address it because that's something that in different ways many people are experiencing the lack of confidence because of somebody or something and I feel like of course it's me and my feelings that if we realize that it's because of somebody and those somebodies are no greater than we then we can get ahead of the game it doesn't mean that I'm getting ahead of the game to step on them because that's a mentality but I'm getting ahead of the game to kind of like overlook them because okay. they're not the problem you know a lot of people and I myself have suffered um sabotages and you know the first time I went through it it was very painful but the spirit was guiding me because I heard the spirit say and he said, he said, not a mumbling word. I'm telling you, I was hearing that while I was going through mass destruction in the first mm -hmm. dark night of the soul. And it's hard for you to not say anything like Jesus demonstrated in the Bible. So I went through that and it stripped me. It now, stripped me to a place. A question on the top of this count because I have a lot of people on my, uh, my platform that is not... Um, that that is that's not into religion that don't do church right um uh so when you how does jesus right and even how do you relate the bible back to your own personal relationship like because a lot of people will hear jesus and immediately they shut down you understand what i'm saying because we've been taught a doctrine that um we are not taught that jesus is actually part of the astrology wheel you know right. um, that cycle um so, so without going too deep if you can just just you know give people an understanding of when you say jesus right um what you're referencing to as far as um because i know you've studied theology psychology um you know and, and a lot more ologies right <laughs> astrology you know um so if you can give people an understanding because we have people that is trying to get 
and understanding of self. And a lot of us have been indoctrinated in different systems. Right. And a lot of people don't understand that throughout the ages, right, um, Jesus would have been Krishna or Cyrus in a different um, age. So if you can just give an example of when you're saying Jesus, how that relates to the individual. Okay, so that Jesus is the actually the, the God in you. That's okay. um, the simplest way to say it. Okay. Um, for every other religion, they all had pretty much the same concept. These people were in different countries and okay. um, places where they had an encounter with that God within them and they were given a name for it as like mm -hmm. Moses. And I was talking about studying the Moses code. I am that I am. That's mm -hmm. your higher mm -hmm. self. And mm -hmm. so our, our doctrines don't want to make it simple because it wasn't simply put to them because it's a system. Mm -hmm. It's a system that um, kind of like puts you in a um, trance that you're not able to really do everything that you need to do because you're worshiping um, idols. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, it's not me, but the God in me, which tells you that he does not want people to talk about his flesh name, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then- yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So when you are going in, and that's that's what the dark night of the soul was taking me through the first time. Um, I had to go through a cellular strip. And that okay. means that everything that I had learned was um, being stripped away. And uh, it was a death, a spiritual mm -hmm. death. Um, and it took me to a higher level of understanding in things. And that's not to say that, you know, sometimes people are offended when you say these things, but I accept it for myself because I went through um, the pain and I paid the price. And it levels up and it brings you to a big understanding of what these uh, people went through um, in these, um, they went through dark nights of the soul, mm -hmm. all right? And yeah, um, yeah. that is a universal process that anyone will go through. They lose in order to gain. This mm -hmm. is life. Yeah, yeah. And if you lose a loved one, a lot of people won't look at it as a loss, but there is a gain. What do you gain out of the loss? Because a lot mm -hmm. of people get stuck at the transition. The energy with them is still with us. Um, if we're conscious or working on consciousness, I should say, they will present themselves to us energetically. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of people have said this is about familiar spirits. And um, so they can say what they want to. But as for me, I'm going to teach what I know because behind the scenes, what's happening is, is a lot of people that have encountered their uh, loved ones, their ancestors, and they're trying to help us to progress because that's what life is about. So when someone takes that away from you, such as, you know, I experienced, they tried to, but it's like, nah, I've been, I, this been happening to me ever since I was a little girl. So you can't have it because everybody else told you something different. I'm just the kind of foolish person to be isolated and uh, put away from people that I'm going to believe what I need to believe. Now, I will take what you have to say and I'll mull over it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Prophetess Kamoy, I want to say this here, when mulling over information, whenever you are sensitive or empath, and even if you don't know it, the darkest forces smell you out. And they, it, it tries to trample you down because there's a magnetic force within us that draws that to us. We have that darkness in us. But at some point, you weren't educated on it because you were only educated mm -hmm. on doing good and the light. Now, that doesn't give us um, the idea to do wrong, but I want to put that out there because what is drawing the, the negative to you? A battery, negative and positive. Mm -hmm. We are no different. The charges. How did life become created? through darkness and light was spoken. So this is something that we have to understand in order to even come out of the dark night of the soul. And you and I and everyone else, whether they participate or not, your soul is what matters. It's not a religious thing. Mm -hmm. we, we, we talked about that earlier, the soul. Um, and I told you one of the things that I've been hearing a lot in the spirit realm is souls. And I, 4 a.m. this morning, I even had a conversation. I was meditating and the spirit started to talk about, you know, every, every aspect 
has a soul. Every aspect in the, on this realm, which you see, which you can touch would have a soul, right? Um, however, not everybody's soul is fully developed. It's like, you know, some people may have to go through millions of life experiences. And it was interesting, you know, that they use life experiences because I was even thinking, oh, lifetimes? And I heard, no, not lifetimes, life experiences, you know? Um, because you can have a life, um, a lifetime of experiences to outgrow or, um, so, okay, because this is another thing, you know, um, I'm all about breaking down the mystery and giving people the simple way of looking at things so you can connect yourself to all of these allegories, right? When I was about seven, I remember, um, you know, I'm from the island. So, um, you know, going in the island, you had Sunday morning church, you had afternoon service, and then you had night service, and then you had Wednesday afternoon church, right? And I remember one of the things I remember thinking in my brain that young was, I don't know what the pastor was talking about, but that young I made up in my mind, I can't deal with the God that they deal with because the God that they talking about how could, at the, that young, how could the God that love everybody say that Catholic is better than Muslim mm -hmm. and Muslim is better than Baptist, you know, and Hinduism is the right way. And then if you not like, so it, it didn't make sense to me, right? So at that young, I already decided like that this was not my path, right? Um, then as I got older, I kept being told, um, uh, you are a prophet. I had no idea what that meant. And then when I went and I researched it, you know, and I, I figured out what that was, that's when I met you because I went studying because that's the thing I, I had to study. Right. Um, the point that I was trying to make, or let me circle back to, to what I'm trying to say is this, there is a life force, like you just said, right. AKA your soul in everything and in everyone right? Um, some people may call it um, God. Some people may call it prana, right? Um, some people may call it source. Um, some people may call it um, the divine one, like whatever you label, whatever label it is, right? Mm -hmm. There is a part of us that is here to experience things, not so much from the outer realm, yes. right? Um, but more from the inner realm. And that's what you're talking about, that shadow aspect, because mm -hmm. that's really the aspect that projects outwardly, right? right? And if you're not in connection with that aspect of yourself, right, then it's very easy to get. Now, this is just my thought, and I am not a medical profession, all right? Um, but this is just something that spirit was showing me. Um, when it comes to dealing with um, voices, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I told someone this recently, you know, you, you have a lot of people um, in the world that is on medication and rightfully so because, you know, um, their, their mental, um, yeah. they need mental help that, you know, um, with their, uh, what do you call it? Maybe their hormones or whatever it may be off balance. Okay. Um, but I want to just say this here. If you have not heard a voice that has whispered something of doubt, of fear, of inspiration, of courage, uh, you ain't human. You ain't human. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's nobody walking around that can tell me that you have not heard a voice of either inspiration or a voice of either negativity, you, you know, because you talked about that positive and negative balance, right? Um, and I say that to say this. That is when you start to tap into soul aspects of yourself that you may need to heal, right? Yeah. Um, that is when you start to deal with different energetic bodies within you, maybe from different lifetimes or maybe even life experiences within this lifetime that you've blocked off, right? Now, um, you said something earlier when you talked about going through the dark night of the soul sometimes require you, requires you to shut your mouth and not say anything, right? Um, and I'm walking through some of that right now. Uh, and you know, because firsthand, and um, I remember in the beginning, I used to, I used to say, <laughs> all right, all right, so I was like, God, you want to see the, you want to see the, you want to see the bullshit? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Do you guys see what they doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm just supposed to sit here and say nothing. Well, I'm going to tell you what, when they come through this door, I'm going to say this, I'm going to say that, and I'm going to let them know this and that because I am not the one. And as soon as the door goes click, 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 nothing would come out. And it was not because I didn't want to just explode, right? They were keeping. But it was also, yes, I knew that I was going through a testing. 
I knew I was going through a test. Then. I told somebody this recently, and I think it was um, either, um, I don't remember, um, but I talked about this recently where I said, um, you know, we all go through our seasons where we have to um, deal with the seeds that we've sown, right? Um, and the more I think about it as we're having this conversation, it's not so much um, to get back at you or to punish you. It's really about maturity and growth. You understand what I'm saying? It is. It is um, because, um, whatever pain you go through, even having a baby, it helps you to mature. There are mm -hmm. some people that when they have children, they don't mature, which is a unfortunate thing because it's supposed to learn um, or teach you something. It's supposed to teach you about your responsibility, number one, when you're birthing and when you plant the seed as a man. And so um, moving on from there, pain is where you gain if you find the profitability in it. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. means that, or I would say from my experience, the pain is what brings you gain because whenever you sit down and you really reflect and you become fair with yourself, if the dark night of the soul is upon you or if you came out of it, your lessons are in that darkness because that's where we create that's from. Great. That's the, the womb. Yeah. And so yeah. everything that's dark causes you to have to do something like reflect. What are you reflecting on the other people? Or are you reflecting on, on how you handle the situation? Because everything about us and life is self-based. It is not about mm -hmm. others. We were programmed to blame people. And so mm -hmm. once we can get out of that subconscious loop, that's what it is. Um, and, and nothing get out Huh? I want to say, and, and we will have to talk about this behind the scenes, because um, uh, you sent me a video um, recently, right, um, that I watched. And like you said, the information mimicked what we were talking about and what we saw coming, you know, um, just by watching the heavens and tracking astrology like to the T. Um, but there was something that was being done in the video that I did not appreciate, um, just from a spiritual standpoint of view of growth, right? Um, which kind of goes back to my story at, at seven years old, you know? Um, and, um, and we're gonna talk about that behind the scenes because uh, I know we're gonna get into it. Um, but if you could remind me, I really wanna talk about that because I did text you and told you that it upset me. I feel like right now, um, and, and this is, you know, um, this is what gets me um, about the whole religious structure. And I'm not trying to blame religion, not by any means. I'm not, you know, um, However, I feel like it teaches you to do exactly that, right? Blame outside of yourself without really teaching you um, the aspects of the Bible itself, which is a book of codes, which is a book of um, um, astrology, numerology, you know? Um, you can find all of the things that we were taught to fear um, about ourselves, right? Because it's really a book of man. It's a book of you, Kim, Juana. It's a book of you, Kamoy, right? It's a book of the individual, right? It's not a book so much for the masses to, to, to follow one person. It's an, a, a book individually geared to, um, towards you, right? Um, so within that video, um, it talked about everything that we talked about, uh, the coming times, you know, and anyone can go back through any of my videos and even your videos where you've been tracking astrologically what's happening in the climate. Um, but one of the things that it also talked about was giving people an out. Um, and, and, and giving people an out, and I didn't necessarily like the out that it gave people, right? Um, because the out that it kind of gave people still was still looking towards um, the church. You understand what I'm saying? And not really teaching people on an individual aspect, you know? Um, so even within that said, I just kind of feel like right now, um, if you were not taking responsibility, like you said, for any aspect of what's not working in your life, <laughs> right? Um, and, and for me, honestly, one of the things that I've had to master throughout, and, and really this might even be lifetimes, to be honest with you, right? Um, is self-worth, uh, which makes me think about, was there a time that I took away somebody's self-worth in, um, in a different um, lifetime, you know? Was there a time that I may not have, um, you know, I may have stepped on someone else to make myself feel powerful, you know? Um, it's possible. Really... Mm -hmm. It's possible okay. because even in this lifetime, we've all did that. 
I mean, I know there's okay. going to be a lot of people okay. that say that um, I've never, and that's because you have not paid attention to yourself and how you relate mm -hmm. to others. You have mm -hmm. not looked and, and looked at yourself through the lens of your own eyes and soul and saw how you participate with others. Because when you do that, then you take a responsibility for yourself. And a lot of things that the soul sees, it records. So during the dark night of the soul, there are things that will come back to us. Um, even a reprobated mind is going to see the horrors of their issues and how they treated people. They may not turn back over. And when I say reprobate mind, I mean one that is lost because so, they have chances to come out of it. It's a comfort zone with mental illness. I don't want to take away anyone's um, ideas of what they have and, and they've been diagnosed. I, I'm not a therapist, but what I do I study what I study because of mental issues, which 100% uh, mm -hmm. of Americans and the world over have dysfunction. That's mental illness. Because if you're not functioning properly, that means that your life is not going to be proper. Mental Can I ask you a question? Are we all not functioning in some form of mental illness, illness like you said? Isn't literally the whole world? Dysfunction. Um, so, when you look yeah. at the word period, dysfunction, you start, if, uh, this is a conscious um, effort. It's not hard for you to think about it, but it means that you think outside of the box. Dysfunction means that you are not functioning properly, which means that your life will not function properly, which means everyone else around you is going to be affected. And if that continues and it does not change, you have a world of dysfunctional people. And so, this is not something that I study to blame people. I study because I want to be a source of help to those that they want change, right? Mm -hmm. um, let me go back to something that you brought up though. And then we can go back into this here. Religion is one thing, but spirituality is another. Now, when you write down religion, you will see a word in religion um, called legion. And um, when you start looking at oh, the word God. for itself, that means that you have been <laughs> conformed. Even though the Bible is telling you strictly not to be conformed, you are conformed. And the thing about conformity is, is that be not of the world. Why? Because the concept of us being here is to work out our soul salvation. Mm -hmm. The freedom of the soul is where a person begins to live mm -hmm. when your soul is free. So how do you know that? Because as much as I've studied about theology, no, I don't know everything, but my experience has taught me so much that mm -hmm. when I was religious, I was doing religiously things. I was mm -hmm. religious about things. I was traditional. Mm -hmm. And some mm -hmm. people don't understand what that means. Um, I still have a consistency with my life. But I've outgrown religious factors and traditions such as Christmas. These here holidays are pagan. This is like, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, religious so, kind okay. of, let me get yeah, this let out. Me just say, this is, is so religion. Now you teaching me about what you want to teach me. And I'm paying all of these bills every time a holiday come up and they come from pagan mm -hmm. holidays. Now I, I'm going to get just real raw. I'm getting sick of you and your shit. <laughs> and let me uh, just say this. I'm I, I want to say, mm, say this too, Robert is Kev, because literally somebody asked me, what are you making for Thanksgiving? Um, if uh, I'm pizza, what the, you, like get, and, you understand the reason, what I mean? Like the reason why you get to, work. the reason why you get to that point is because you wake up and see that you celebrating somebody else's Thanksgiving. Was you a pilgrim? And, and then let me just say this. Now, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, but I'm yeah. just out now, the box. Now, let me just say this, because even when you go back, right? So this is where people get lost to. This is why you study to show yourself approved, right? So they're saying all of this stuff is based on paganism. But when you go back and you really study the foundation of paganism, they believe in the heavens and the stars, the earth. You understand what I'm saying? So technically speaking, any major holiday that you're having is based on the solar system. Yes, so I'm pretty is. sure if you get in right now to break people down, really what this transition represents, you can literally break it down to people why this happens on this Thursday, why the number always change, because there's something going on in 
the stars, in the heavens, right. why it is on this day. Like that is not by random, you know? Um, so I, I implore people, go back and study for yourself. A lot of things that they consider to be paganism, it, it, it is indoctrinated, yes. But, but, but research what that means. It's just like when they teach us to, um, to fear astrology, right? Astrology is all over the Bible. The three wise men were astronomers. They were astrologists. The like it yeah. you, you, yes, so, you know? You um, so I, I'm learning exactly what you said. There is a difference be between lesions, like you said, right? Because then you take on someone else's thoughts, someone else's belief, which, right? So now this is what I told you at seven years old. Spirit is talking to me and saying, okay, that's not me. I don't do that, you know, and then, and then getting the whole aspect of, but I also create good and evil. So I'm, I'm in all things, you know, which takes us back to the shadow side, right? Right. Always. Um, and you got to meet with your shadow. That's why it's following you. Mm -hmm. uh, because you got to <laughs> meet with it and, and you're meeting. Uh, it, it could be easier but because we are trained to be about the world, our meeting is going to be in, in darkness. It's going to be in hell. And, you know, um, the hell is hell. Yeah. Explain hell. So well, they can, from, yeah, from my experience <laughs> in, this, in this life, a spiritual death is one that uh, allows you to descend as in, in your human form uh, because your spirit is affected by it so that your soul can get, the message is through so you can um, wake up to your own truth. And that truth is really to get back home. Now, that doesn't mean that we're leaving here, but getting back home to us as individuals and those that are following means that we want to feel the solace and peace that Jesus was talking about or the Christ was speaking from him or Buddha or Krishna because they were all promoting peace. Now, you can't get peace outside of you. Number one, because everything is about consumerism. It's about taking and using. Mm -hmm. And some people will say, well, but I love you. Okay, let me just, just say this here. You love, but have you loved me unconditionally? That's when you come to, and have you loved in a place where someone has hurt you to the epitome of your heart and you chose to keep on loving? Now, this mm -hmm. is where the sacrifice begins. And no one has to sacrifice. Everything about your self-worth and growth is wrapped up in that very thing because mm -hmm. your children may hurt you and you love them. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. love them unconditionally in most cases. There's parents that don't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of it is perception, but whenever you are growing, you can't stay with the same form that you were with five years ago. And it could take different times. Like if you're in religion, you may be asked to stay there. You may be, right? Because that's what your soul is requiring. But okay. there could be some that are asked to go to the next level, which is what john the baptist and jesus um they show you um in their soul development mm -hmm. they show you the advancement through jesus speaking of the christ the father within him because john didn't have that per se capability okay now just to break it down okay um so we're still talking about that Christ life, that energy that connects you to the ethers, right? So we're still talking about what um, I would like to say that still in a voice that encourages you and tell you to get up for your ass when you need to, that tells you everything is going to be okay, that tells you that you were perfectly and wonderfully made, that tells you that you're whole and complete in every way, you know, that tells you that you might need to go apologize because you know your ass was wrong. Right. <laughs> and I, I, I feel like, you know, being transparent, you, if you use the Bible or anybody's um, religious teaching, if mm -hmm. you're not getting that internally, you're, you're not, you're not mm -hmm. doing anything mm -hmm. because it's one thing to read the word, but it's another thing to become it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you do not become it, meaning that you're reprogramming your soul while you're in the dark night of um, the soul, because there's nothing, nothingness. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. If you've lost a lot, you lost everything while you were in a dark night of the soul, that was your time to reprogram yourself and change you. While a lot of people struggle through dark, this is a very important time, you know? So let me ask you a question, right? So, um, because we, we've been using terms like dark night, dark night of the soul, um, prana, source energy, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, right? Um, we've been using all of those terms, right? Let's, can you give in it like a real life example of what the dark night of the soul experience will look like? Because a lot of people don't even know when they're going through a dark night of the soul, right? Yeah, you, um, so, you, um, you go through. So how, how, how can someone identify when they're going through a dark night of the soul? Well, everything will start um, drying up in your life. You won't see manifestations. Mm. Um, you'll start <laughs> like, ain't nothing gonna work <laughs> work and it could be for okay. a time period it could be 18 years it could be oh. 20 Ooh. um it you know honestly it depends on how you sow and you won't be able to keep in in, in most cases relationships won't work because that soul encounter is trying to get you in a relationship with yourself this is why when you talk about, so the, the foundations of religion and spirituality or religion, let's say that, it is really to get you a foundation and get you to the next place, which religion sets you up for moral standings, right? Mm -hmm. It's been used in different ways that is not very well to other people because it's extended into something that it just doesn't set well like control. Now, moving on, as you move on from religion, where you have been religiously programmed, you begin to experience if you are getting that word in you and speaking, and the word is positive information because you want to change from negative to positive, right? So if if you're doing that, even with the word, whatever you, you know, religion you've been in, what's going to happen is your soul is going to begin to transform mm -hmm. and things are going to happen. And then your experience with the dark night is that you're going to go into what seems to be isolation. Mm -hmm. it, it won't be apparent. And some people, it is apparent because they're in prison. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. you will have a mental prison that you're in until you break through your thoughts, which is where you struggle with the ego. Mm -hmm. You know how mm -hmm. many people mm -hmm. are struggling with their thoughts? That's a mental prison. That's hell. That's, mm -hmm. that's an extension of the dark night of the soul because they can't get out of it. Worry has become mm -hmm. a problem. It's darkness. Now, mm -hmm. moving on from there, you experience losses. You experience losses of family, um, money. I mean, it can, it can be so many different things, but the material part is the fact that you want to look at. You, you're starting to get into the space where, mm -hmm. you know, you're in this world, but not of it. How do you mm -hmm. come out of it? Because you find that material gain is not um, satisfactory anymore. And some people struggle with that, but that is one of the basis of that uh, part of our life because, you know, whatever your soul contract is, you came here to do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. that means that it could be possible that you're going to have to learn the difference between spirit and mammon. And when you learn that, go ahead. You know, it's interesting because as you're speaking, one of the things that spirit just keeps saying to me is um, talk about, talk about um, atheists or, you know, talk about atheists, talk about atheists, talk about atheists, right? And how this applies to a dark night of the soul aspect would apply to people um, that does not have any religious background that don't necessarily believe in any entity outside of themselves. So this is the aspect that spirit is, is given to me um, because like I said, I want people to leave here with a clear understanding of this. This is a communication in a relationship with yourself, right? So I feel like even if you have an atheist that don't believe um, in a higher power or a source, right? Um, you still have somebody that believes in positive thinking, right? <laughs> right? You still have somebody that believe in positive energy, right? So even when you're tapping into positive thinking and positive energy as an um, atheist and you're going through, because an atheist too can go through a dark night of the soul. A dark night of the soul is just anyone 
on a lower vibrational end of the aspect of not facing something that you need to deal with in your life to either grow, right, and expand, or really either to let go because it no longer serves you, right? Um, so you have some people that come in, right, and they don't believe necessarily that there's a God, right? They don't necessarily believe that um, there's anything outside of themselves, right? Um, how would you get across to someone that don't even have a foundation of spirituality or even a religious background bone in their body? Like a, anytime they hear anything about spirituality or anytime they hear anything about religion, they just crawl, right? So how would we explain this is not, this is, of course, this is an everybody thing, right? This is an everybody thing. How would you explain that based on what you've learned in studying in um, psychology and human behavior, how this connects? And, and, let me, and if you want to even include um, why this is collectively by using um, any planetary aspects of, you know, of how that works for people that don't even believe, um, how, how this is globally playing out in all of our lives, you know? Because some people may say, well, um, I don't believe, so therefore there is no dark night of the soul. There is nothing I have to walk through, right? He just acted like an asshole. I checked them and then moving on. I don't have to work on myself. There's nothing I need to change. You understand what I'm saying? So how do you, how do you, how do you deal with people like that? How do you, um, get a message you have a religion, if you're religious, spiritual or not, there's an accountability hmm. to the universe. And that means oh, that if okay, I, I misuse you, um, there's a accountability uh, within the universe that's holding me accountable to hurting people. So, you know, everybody come here with this, the agreement that they signed and how they're going to live. Okay. whether they complete it or not so even if it's an atheist and um what i believe is is that that's their path mm -hmm. I, I believe that people have become too conformed in a way of thinking to just accept people for who they are and um everything that on things um, huh? do you think we put too much labels on um on what the path is or what we, you know, um, what the path that we should take um, or the best path or the right path or, I do. Um, you know. I think okay. that anyone that listens to um, me or that works with me, um, they will come by, you know, um, like soul tribe design. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the same with, you know, atheists, they're atheists. And so um, their radar is um, going off with that. They congregate together. Um, it's the same as the LGB um, community, LGBT okay. community. And okay. it's not to separate. What I, I feel like still is, is that, every, yeah, people, we label things. And so we put a separation in everything. And that's where I think pro problems began because in religion, you know, when you go back into Egypt, you know, there was, you know, um, a comment put on everything and blah, blah. So when you do that, it brings separation. And then what happens is, is that people want to conquer it because you're not the same. And that's how we've gotten to the place where we don't like people because they uh, worship differently or um, someone says that they don't believe in God. And so leave them alone. You know, I had someone that I was working with and they were actually doing some work for me. And because, you know, I talk about God, they didn't like it. And they were um, of the atheists and I didn't have a problem with working with them. Um, but that showed me something. Um, I didn't get mad. I kept going because I believe in accepting people for who they are yeah, yeah. and what whatever you're able to give. Now, if you don't follow pursuit with a spiritual encounter or a spiritual background, you are still going to go through hard times and you're going to um, not call it what we've called it. But, you know, I called it that because I saw the darkness that mm -hmm. others don't see. Like right now, people don't see the darkness in the world. They see the light. But they got darkness to an epitome all around, not scary, but a time to really check into your source, the God of your being, the goddess. Why? Because in unity, we can overcome. 
I feel like people forget what we're here for. And that's something that I can't tell you. You got to remember now what resonated with me is my soul contract and what I have to do. Uh, if you are with people that don't understand or know that, then there'll be a lot of confusion because you're not working as an individual. You have three parts to you. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that, that means that there's a conscious part of you, a subconscious and a super conscious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if Trinity. that's right. And then, yeah, the Trinity. And then it goes into all different other words to, ex to explain Sorry. it. But if mm -hmm. you don't know that about yourself, everything uh, that we have discussed today would cause you to fall. Mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. fall is mental because after you've been through so much in the you know in that time when you're going through let's just say a season of darkness because when you first get here as a baby it looks very light I mean a lot of us don't remember that but the darkness is not like it is as a person where you've been carrying all this baggage up here and now you're worrying about things that nobody know you've not talked about it and if you hold too much in your mind period you'll cause yourself to fall anyway because yes. it's not yes. breakdown yes so yes you, yeah that's not that's not tied to any religious factor that's right. just tied to the mental capacity you're absolutely right mm -hmm. so we're mm -hmm. learning how to think from these religions and we're learning how to behave positive and um why do you want to be positive you could try experimenting with and that's what i feel like my life has been an experiment i'm trying to do something this way to see what's going to happen over here but okay that's not working and then i'm going to try and do it again over here so i can see if it worked this way right and and that's what these religions they they teach you but you got to see beyond the veil with it like don't get caught up in other people's lives and when you have been in that church in a synagogue and the worship experience and however you do it that you're looking at them because now you you've forgotten what you went there for so get in there right what you go there for just I, i'm just i'm make, making a, a picture here what you go there for if you get caught up in in the masses and this is any group um, yep yeah, this is any group literally i've been watching um you know, because I'm, I'm preparing to teach um, uh, the Kabbalion uh, next year, right? Um, and also getting the classes ready for Dark Matter. So I've been um, watching a lot of um, videos lately that seems to be based around even the structure of how people can get into cults, right? And not even know that they've joined the cult because they joined for one thing, to, to be uplifted, to be inspired, right? Not to be doctrinated. You understand what I'm saying? Now, one of the things that I noticed, right, um, throughout, and there's been some big ones recently, um, you know, um, this gentleman just went to, to prison pretty much for the, the rest of his life. I mean, started this whole um, big thing, um, uh having people really think they were helping people and then got into like a, 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 a um like a sex trafficking and just like oh, just just you know literally the power got to his head and mentally like i think he probably just you know lost it right um but what i learned from watching this documentary and in uh, another documentary is two things one um Mind Control 101 NLP programming throughout it all, okay? So, um, and I know that because I have, I have taken the classes and gotten certified, right? So we're talking about NLP classes and learning how to program people 101, okay? Um, the next thing I discovered is it is very easy for a person to get caught up, right? In buying someone else's perception of life if you don't have a clue of who you are. Right. You understand so what, what you're doing is what we've been talking about, trying to find yourself, but you you still get lost in them. And let me, because this has been a problem, the word cult, I wanted to find it because I even had someone in the family years ago um, because of something I was reading, they were saying, don't get caught. And so I don't just listen to words. I always define them. Um, I, was, culture. I was yeah. in my um right i was in my 20s so it says cult is a system of religious veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure 
but but the, the, let me just uh, see now i want to say this though right it's interesting because i'm like you i like to go past what they saying because when we think about it right and and you know how you talked about religion legions right um cult culture right so when we're looking to me a cult is literally a culture of people that may believe in a particular system or in doctrine right now so so um Apple could be considered a cult. I learned that in um, um, a training that I went to. Apple could be considered a cult. Nikes can be considered a cult. Mm -hmm. If you have someone standing outside a line for 24 hours waiting to purchase a pair of sneakers or a brand new phone, yep. isn't that an idol? You, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you, you know? Um, the government. Uh, you, you know, so I, I want to say this is this is exactly where um, know thyself or to thy own self be true, right? Knowing thyself. Um, and then the next rule is um, do no harm to anyone. You do no harm to anyone and you know yourself. You understand what I'm saying? Now, um, that's um, going to take some deep um, thinking, you know, contemplation. Because yeah. Now, because because within that there's a power there's a paradox too because then you still come with uh with the theory if you're studying um any type of um uh theology right you got the positive and negative i am god i created good and evil i create nations but i take out nations yeah, you understand what i'm saying 45. i mean it's there so you know so it's right so what you want to see anymore is reading what is true that's what that's that's what it is. I mean, everything that people tell you is not good. I I I've just been the person that just look. I will study with you, but I don't believe everything that you say. It's not personal, but I need to get it for myself. And the I reason why myself. is because yeah. a lot of things that I've seen is different than what people believe in. Like I told you and i've told many of them that are in our classes i have been seeing the greek god since i was a little girl mm -hmm. and we've talked in detail about um some of those messages and the um the epiphany and even some of um um, not to give out too much of your experiences, but even some of your, um, I really want to say astro travel um, experiences, um, which is something that I think um, people need to really uh, tap into. Uh, you have oh. a lot of people that are having uh, all of these wonderful experiences and they're not embracing them because That's you're taught it. that this is not the way to do things. This is not the right way, you know? Um, or you gotta go through this particular person to even speak to God, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, hence, disconnecting yourself from your true source, your life force, your God or goddess energy within you. Um, and even, and, and this is even what I wanna say, right? Um, Cause we go back to, um when you go back to um studying any type of religious documentation they all kind of lead you back to the seven hermetic principles right um oh, they all kind of lead you back there um and in the seven hermetic principles one of the things that you have to understand before you get to any other principles that first principle that you talked about everything is mental yeah. all is mind right and if you can't get that than any others of the universal laws that comes after that, you're not gonna be able to get to, to use, to, to, to yield, to bend, to break, right? Because you haven't, you haven't um, solidified or accepted that everything is first mental, you know? Everything is first mental, you know? I went into meditation this morning and I closed my eyes and I was thinking and saying to spirit, this is so beautiful. The light work and the lights and the colors and just beautiful. You understand what I'm saying? Really just a beautiful colors um, just coming through. And then even to the point where it started to break down into little pixels and maybe even sacred geometry shapes. You, you, you know what I'm saying? That's why this I'm is, yeah, this is what we're connected to. Now, even as I'm sitting there and I'm seeing all of this, do you know that energy is talking to me? And this is where I was telling you, it's explaining to me that people are here with souls, but the souls are not evolved yet. And, and they're going to have to go through millions of experiences. So in that darkness, right? And then, which takes me back to the dark night of the soul. Because the dark night of the soul, when you, um, and I don't want to say submit, 
But when you surrender that this is just what it is right now, you can still have beautiful experiences like that last night. You, you know what I'm saying? The dark night of the soul doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna be crying every day and because things are difficult, you can't find the light, you know? Um, as I have been growing in my personal walk, one of the things that I love the way spirit communicates with me, and this is definitely probably because of my Gemini, my Gemini moon, all that mercury energy up in my, in my moon, right? Um, is the allegory of how the process of life works here. Um, and even uh, within the universe. So um, Spirit was explaining to me, we have it backwards. There's not birth and then death. There's death and then life, yep. you know? Death yep. and life, That that's the order, right? That That is the order. And it began to show me, even when you look at a seed, an, an apple seed, yep. uh, almond seed, right? That seed got to die to itself and go in the dirt where there's darkness. Everything has to go through fucking darkness. That seed got to go in the dirt and die, right? Ain't no sunlight, right? Then you got to water it, which means it's wet and cold. You understand what I'm saying? And damp. You can't see anything. Then it got to force its way out of the shell, right? Plant itself in the dirt and it still can't see shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It still can't see anything, right? Then it got to work its way up so the stem can just pop out to, to just get a glimpse. Yep. And even getting a glimpse, it's still got to grow and grow and grow and grow and evolve, right? But even within every step in every stage, first it had to die to become a seed, right? And plant itself. Then it had to die to become a stem. You, you, you know, like there's so many levels that we go through and spirit explains to me, it's the same thing in your life. Yeah. Death is always going to precede life. You always gonna have to die to something to, to, to get something to, you, know, you know to live. Here, hence the paradox. When you look at evil, you see live. You understand what I'm saying? There's always going to be that duality, that shadow that you're gonna have to master, no matter how you look at it. So this is what I love about just being on the quest of getting to know myself because you can find yourself everywhere in an apple seed. That's right. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? In the womb of a calf. You, you understand what I'm saying? You can find yourself everywhere. You know, it, you, you are literally embedded and connected to everything. If you watch the allegories of how nature, it, it teaches you who you are. You know, nature is definitely connected to the heavens. It's definitely connected to sources, whatever you call it. You pay attention to how nature rolls and how nature rocks and you will find your nature. You will find how you ebb and flow, right? Yeah. Then you know that you can speak to the ethers also and have things to work on your behalf. That's yeah. another topic we have to talk about next time. It's necessary <laughs> for um, one that's looking for the next level to uh, break out of the mm. limitations and the box because mm. that's where your growth is. And um, I'm going to probably wrap it up, but just for me, I'm going to say in the growth and limitations, this is all of your spirituality is leading you to higher levels of yourself. Um, and in that, if you could take your thoughts away from what you think it should be and accept what it is, that's when you grow beyond where you have been. Yeah. Uh, you have an idea of creativity, but you you and I cannot label people and things. That is what keeps us in the box. Mm -hmm. The box is um, oppositional because until you get to a certain place with spirituality, you have no power. And the power is when you have made up your mind that nothing else rocks your world. There's that. nothing. And I mean, I don't say this in a way where it's like, very cavalier when you go through seeming losses because things come back to you after you have reached that place where that uh little seed grows up and it's now seeing the sun oh shit i get it now oh my gosh it was dark in there but i i, I get the lesson i get it right so and then, out, it's, i get it yep mm -hmm. the, you're in there because of the lesson that's why people mm -hmm. go to prison again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
They mm -hmm. go to prison because the system is supposed to teach them something which it doesn't, but that's that caged up um, process is supposed to keep you there so you can learn. It's um, somewhat of a behavior um, redirector, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm putting mm -hmm. it nicely, but here, this is what your um, experiences of dark night of soul is. Even mm -hmm. if you get a headache, and you've been thinking about negative things for so long, mm -hmm. the headache mm -hmm. is there to redirect you not mm -hmm. to think about stuff. Shut your mm -hmm. mind down. Mm -hmm. And now that, now we're gonna wrap it up um, and to show you how it's all connected because now we're dealing with third eye chakra and Carl chakra work, which means that you got some blocked energy up here. You know what I'm saying? Cause you're not thinking right. You're not perceiving positively. You know what I'm saying? So all of that energy is blocked up up there, right. you know? Yeah, so it's once again the allegories and the, right. and to show you everything is connected. Everything right. is connected. Right. You know, right. I like this. Yeah, and I love the nail color. I meant to tell you that from since yesterday. <laughs> you know, yeah, when you talked about I'm sexy, I thought about oh my goodness, yes. <laughs> I was like, okay, I didn't see everything else, and I looked and. I learn and I'm gonna, you know I'm a scholar but how about me look at my sexiness oh, at yeah. five, I'll be 56 next month you get with, uh, with a shape of a 25 year old at that I'm just gonna throw that out there <laughs> you know, that is another part of your um confidence level after you've been through so much it's like you start looking at things that you didn't look at and give yourself um credit some people have given themselves credit for being beautiful and you know i've heard many people um and people have complimented me but i tell you that honestly my mind wasn't on that it was on the work mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. and i'm glad because i didn't get caught up in vanity now mm -hmm. you know I, I see a part of me that i can use to still help people and that is 50 and over wellness so and I'm gonna say that I've been I've been checking out your video. I'm thinking I said, well, I'm not 50 yet, but um, you know, I can still use that, you know. Uh, and I do have um uh subscribers on my channel that are definitely 50 and over, and some of them I even mentor behind the scenes. Um, so y'all need to go check out um Kim Wana's channel because she does do videos especially directed to 50 and older um real life experiences helpful tips as well as using all of her um education all over um these what is it 30 plus years prophetess kim you've been studying all of these theologies all no, longer than that? no yeah because in the uh, beauty salon i mean i could say from like maybe 20 22 so it's been about um 40 something years studying okay. really uh -huh. studying because myself. actually yes because your grand when you say your grandmother and an auntie is somebody yeah you grew up just yeah very i mean very as a good. child i was observing people so it's like i really been studying all, studying all my life all and that life. is my lifeline behavior yeah, see? yeah. See? Uh, so if you can let everybody know your um, YouTube channel, because I am also going to upload this on my um, channel, but if you can let everybody know the YouTube channel so they can go check out um, the videos, the 50 and over videos, as well as um, the astrology content where you break down astrology and apply it to the human behavior, which a yeah. lot of people don't really do, okay? Yeah, and, and so um, to make it real quick, I do, I study behavior and from one level to the next, I've been led spiritually to study other things and that would help the behaviors such as astrology and the energy is raw. So if it's mm -hmm. raw, it will not cooperate with you. You have to learn how to train it. That means that you and the energy become one. Um, Saturnian energy is about karma. So is Jupiter. That means that, that you may not be aware of it, but you're going to be restricted. You may not make all of your money in a life until you're later on in age let's say that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you're learning lessons and that's the lot that you had chose mm -hmm. so that energy you know if people give up on it then we are in a mindset where we can help you to overcome depression because saturnian energy causes depression it's a very mm -hmm. heavy energy um gemini's i was telling you um yesterday about adhd because yes. the message is like lightning your thoughts are like yes. lightning yes. With energy yes are at that speed right now so what happens if you don't understand it that means that your communication is firing off and you could be hurting people you don't know how to think about 
or think it into the right perspective because it just comes out that way. Well, don't be okay with it coming out that way. Practice and make yourself, you know, better because Steve Jobs had communication issues. But look, that dude trained his mind to say, mm -hmm. to think mm -hmm. and say together yeah. the right things. And he became yeah. more than a millionaire. So this is what we're looking at. But anyway, with astrology, theology, and um, psychology, the mind, theology, the spirit not religion, it's the spirit. So um, the practice of three together will get you more because you'll understand the stars and the moon according to you individually mm -hmm. and how the stars and the moon make you think when you're undisciplined. Okay. Your spirituality yeah. becomes the component of discipline. Okay. And, and then you I make it over. And I would want to say, and we can probably get into that in another video, um, if you like, um, um, I would want to say that would probably be the, the, the feminine aspect of things. Um, we not, we don't leave that for another video because then that could go on for like another two hours because I got yeah. tons of questions about yeah, astrology. Got a lot of stuff. So for my page, you want to tell them um, about what you do. Yes. So um, I am a tarot reader. So really, I am a life coach and tarot reading is just one of the aspects within my spiritual toolkit. Um, so I have been studying um, my spiritual um, aspect of self for over 20 years now. Um, I use um, energy as my base. Um, I am a certified Reiki healer. So I use the energy in the chakra system of my base of all of my readings, okay? Um, so all of the readings are done within the energy of the planets. And a lot of times I don't have to go looking to see where the moon is or what's going on because they will speak to me directly um, and they will come out. And then, you know, um, when I do go look, I'm like, oh, this is why, you know? Um, so I am very sensitive to energy. I am a life coach and a terror reader. Um, and I also, I want to say, which is very, very important, um, I am also going to be um, focusing and specializing in emotional and uh, mental wellness um, within my coaching. Uh, and I say that because a lot of people don't understand if your mind and your perception um, is off because everything is mentally based, right, then your heart right, in your throat chakra energy, which I call the Holy Trinity, Trinity. so it's your heart chakra, your throat chakra, and your third eye chakra, mm -hmm. right, what you feel, what you speak, your words, your spells, your spelling, right, and right. your perception, how you see things, right, mm -hmm. now, it's important for you to know if this is not thinking right, and this is saying certain things, right, guess what, this right here, which is the highest frequency right. that's in your body that pulsates, is going to give you experiences that matches what you see and what you speak, right, Right. Um, so I really try to use my gift and in the spirit as being um, a uh, seer, um, an empath um, to bring together the energy as we know it, the universal laws as we know it, um, to help people to get unstuck, get out your own way. OK, and I'm a self alchemist. So which means I also use all of this stuff to get out my own way. OK, um, and hold myself accountable. And Kim will tell you behind the scenes. Yeah, I, I, you know, I. Yeah, okay, um, having to step up. So literally, I want to say I created the platform to help others, but what I find is I'm really helping myself. Yeah, you got to help you yourself. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, so um, yeah, come on over. We have fun. <laughs> and it's always knowledge based. Um, so you're not going to leave there. Um, yes. At the same Today's time. Today's Wednesday. We're going to be next Wednesday the same time. And I want to say this one is pre-recorded, okay? Um, so I'm going to work on getting my game up so we know how to do this live. <laughs> Maybe it's somebody out there that might listen that yes. knows how to do this. So yes. we, what we so. want to do is get our um, live Facebook going through our Zoom. So, you know, connect with us if you know how to do that. Um, yeah. And I also want to shout out the... Um, the leadership movement that's going on right now, the women of leadership. And I want to oh, talk right, about yes. that okay, before, yeah. we, um, before we wrap up, okay? Um, we are in a culture and in a season right now where if you do not, um, I want to say own who you are. And um, this is not about being a better you or a best you, but just being you, right? Being your own leader, 
not waiting for someone else to lead you out of shit you created for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Not trying to get someone to lead you out of why you feel this way about something, right? You can lead yourself to why you feel a way about something. You can lead yourself to why you settle for something. You can lead yourself to why you treat someone a certain way, right? right. Um, so um, Kim has started a, um, a very... Um, wonderful movement and a platform where um, she's selected, or I want to say really, um, she's gifted in this. Um, um, she's opened up her platform. I don't want to say selected. She's opened up her platform to women of different walks of life, different skill sets, um, different gifts, okay? And I want to say freely giving them the opportunity to grow. Um, and to empower others to do the same. And I keep saying this because um, from the first time I met her, y'all, and I talk about going on my quest in the beginning about how I even met you, right? Um, wasn't seeking to go back to nothing religious. I was definitely led um, and guided to that particular um, um, seminar. What I didn't know at that time was um, that was probably just to meet you because you, you never been back to another one after that. <laughs> understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I went to several after that, but you ain't never circled back, you know? Um, but within that time, even you telling me this was 10 years ago that um, this is what I was going to be doing and me looking at you like you was crazy. And a matter of fact, telling you that, nah, this ain't what I want to do. Um, yeah. Never forcing religion in me, but allowing me to be and find my way. Mm -hmm. And for that, I am grateful, okay? Because I give a lot of pushback about the church, y'all. You know, and she nicely sum it up sometimes for me, y'all, uh, you know, because that is not my walk. Um, but you've never um, discouraged me and allowed me not to think because I didn't think this way or because I didn't have this belief system that, you know, one of the things you did tell me, and I'll never forget this, because when you told me that I was going to be a minister and I look at you like, no, <laughs> oh, hell no, I don't do church, pastor. No. <laughs> and you said to me, that means being an administrator. You have a gift. You're going to administrate knowledge. I'm like, okay, I can, I can do that now. That I could do, you know, um, to see full circle 10 years that we're actually doing what you talked about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even I want to say eight years ago and telling me that you knew we were going to work together. I didn't see that vision back then, you know, mm -hmm. um, but opening up this platform where I get to be me. I don't have meetings in the background telling me you can't curse, you can't talk about extraterrestrials, you can't talk about um, um, Osiris, you can't talk about Heru. I don't have those type of meetings. You allow me to be me and to use your platform to reach people in my community. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I want to thank you and I want y'all to um, just you. reach out. I'm going to have your, um, I'm going to put your, information in my description box the email addresses and everything um so you guys can reach out to prophetess kim okay or kim wanna you know um um however you you want to refer to her um that is fine uh, once it's in love and respect she will openly uh, welcome you oh i want to say i think she's on my bandwagon now but if you're not doing your work don't circle back don't circle her way <laughs> if you're not doing your work don't circle her way but it's a platform really where she's invited um a platform for different women of different background, different skill sets to bring their gift to the table to help empower other women to lead yeah. their own lives. Okay, this is not about you following um, my walk or Kim was walk. This is about us giving you the steps and our experiences so you can now lead your own life. Okay, so you guys want to check it out. Um, and Kim, just give them an um, email address or website or anything um, that they can tune into. And we're going to be back next Wednesday. We're going to work on coming in live next Wednesday so we can probably answer some questions um so next we'll week. be um you can email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com um questions I would say at a minimum because okay. you know we have a lot going on and um I I welcome them but if you want to get involved then just jump in because um okay. you may not have done this before but we're in a season where you're doing things that you've not done before mm -hmm. you're learning and you're yeah. learning how to walk by faith in this season of life that we're in um with uh yeah and let me say when i say questions i'm not talking about um I'm, I'm, let me let me just be clear about this i'm talking about questions pertaining to the topic that we're going to be discussing oh now, yeah okay yeah, <laughs> so, 
Let me, I have to make that clear. Okay. So this yeah. is not come and, and say, okay, um, Kimoy, what do you see from my life? Or yeah. Kim, you know what? No, we're not doing yeah. that. Okay. Um, um, personal it, yeah. We, sessions yeah. Into we, intuition. Yes, we would have to schedule a session for that. Um, but we will be, um, we may not get to all the questions, but we will be at least looking in the chat to see if we can answer any questions pertaining to the topic of next week. Okay. That yeah. we're going to do. All right. So um, and if you guys, um, let me just let everybody know my YouTube channel is for your inner voice okay that's the number four your inner voice my instagram also is the number four your inner voice okay i'm on a new instagram campaign i'm gonna be like these youngins in, in a minute i don't know what they call i know on youtube they call it your inner voice now yeah, um yes i just okay. after that meeting when i got called out now we i got off that meeting and, and, and did that by the way <laughs> okay. I put the videos up yesterday and i put the old one on there so that's another okay thing. So if you're working on um, yeah i literally just ever. changed that yesterday was tuesday mm -hmm. i literally changed that after our executive coaching meeting yet yesterday oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So. In the video. so I want them to know that we do network you now, you know, and we'll talk okay. about the memberships as well if they want to get okay. involved on the business level. So okay. I thank you for um the time that we have to share together and share the knowledge because um it's important to me because it's who I am. And um, you, you don't mean and you've been doing this for a long time behind mm -hmm. the scenes, a long, I mean, yeah. for me, at least 10 years, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. at least 10 years Thank advising you. and seeing for me. Yeah. Um, behind the Thank scenes. Thank you for and letting me. And, yeah. you know, this is, you know, something that at some point we have to talk about also is, you know, you have um, profits that are different and people tend to categorize themselves off of other profits that they see. I'm a wisdom profit you know i go back to the beginning um alpha and omega kind um so we have different profits and um profitess and uh we our gifts are different i just at some point talk about that because we need to get that over because people are saying well if i don't if i don't speak and flow like them you're not speaking and flowing yeah, like them yeah, because yeah. god's um words is inspirational so it comes yeah, and it's no, not always the same way. That too, because um, yeah. I want to know what you're taking that everybody is somewhat their own prophet. And you yes, we are. That that own divinity within you, you yeah. know? Um, yeah, Aquarian oh, age. Okay. Oh, 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 you know what? That would be one of the topics that we can talk about is just the Aquarian age and really leading up to the next 15 to 18 yeah. months. So we can talk we about can that talk too. About that. We'll be in um, next week. Yes, next Wednesday. Um, if, yeah, next Wednesday, eleven thirty. Um, we're either gonna do the live. Let's aim for a live. Um, if not a live, we're still gonna upload a video. So yeah. these videos and these um talks are gonna be coming on Wednesdays. All right. Um, okay. I love everybody. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and we're gonna see y'all next week. I'm getting ready to stop the record button, like I'm the one. Um, you know, I'm the one controlling this. Right. <laughs> okay. Bye. I'm. I'm a.